Hello, welcome back to What Jack Has Made. In this video, we're going to be going over the new Gatsby starter default um, starter kit that we installed in the last episode and configuring it so that we can pull down our WordPress data source from our new schema that we set up using WP GraphQL in the previous chapter of this series. So before we get started, I just want to go over some modifications I've made to the package.json file. As you can see, I've stripped out a lot of the Gatsby plugins and kept it quite bare bones. Um, I've also gone into Gatsby config and we'll go over this in a bit, but for now you could just have an empty array of your plugins. Um, I've also gone into the source and modified some of the components so that we're not using the default SEO component um, and we're not using any of the Gatsby images at the moment. We'll be revisiting those later on in the series uh, because at the moment we're going to be using external CDNs as our image sources. But later on, I'll be going over how we could utilize the Gatsby image plugin and how we can pull down from our CDN and self host the images on Netlify later on. Um, but for now, just Note that we've made some changes. We've removed a lot of the um, plugin dependencies and Gatsby plugins that came with this starter kit. So today we're going to be going over the um, Gatsby data source uh, GraphQL plugin that you kind of saw a bit of configuration for just now. Um, I'll go ahead and search for that. So Gatsby data. GraphQL. And we should be able to find the Gatsby source GraphQL plugin. Now you can go ahead and run this npm install save GraphQL source uh, command. I'll run that in my terminal from my Gatsby um, root directory. And this will go ahead and pull down the package. And while that happens, we'll open up our Gatsby config file again and look at the configuration I've got. So this configuration comes from the um, plugin documentation. If you scroll down, it'll show you how to use the plugin and give you some examples of how you can use one data source, um, multiple data sources uh, using authentication um, and how you can create sort of a connection between your Gatsby interface and an external API. Uh, it also shows you how you would query within um, Gatsby's schema later on, but I'll be going through this with you. Um, and at the bottom, we've also got this refetching data property, which um, using a refetch interval key, we can set uh, a number of seconds for Gatsby to go and check if there's any new data from our data source while we're in development. This doesn't work in production. Um, in production, you will only have the data that is available at build time. But during our development, we can go ahead and refetch, you know, changes to posts or pages and see what that looks like in our Gatsby environment as we're developing. So it's gone ahead and downloaded the package, it's taking about 30 seconds to install. And we've got it now available in our package.json file. Um, and that means we can now go ahead and configure it within our Gatsby config file. Now I'll go through my configuration with you. First off, we're creating an object inside the array which says to use the Gatsby source GraphQL plugin that we've just installed. And then the type name, we've used WordPress in capital letters. This will be used later on if we're trying to query. Um, it's kind of a hard concept to get around until you see it visualized, but we're going to be using it to sort of um, query named types of posts or groups of objects and fields. It'll make sense later on. Um, especially when we're using ACF. And field name WordPress is the field group that all of the data will be available under inside our internal uh, GraphQL schema in Gatsby. And then we're using the URL, which we previously had errors um, going to in our browser, but it'll be fun using it as uh, an endpoint. If I go ahead and open this in my browser, this was the error we had before where it says we haven't made a request. You might notice as well inside my uh, configuration, I'm using HTTP and not HTTPS. 
This is because if you use a self-signed certificate for your local environment, this will throw an error in Gatsby saying that it can't authenticate the data source. So use HTTP when you're using a local offline data source. And then when you deploy your WordPress application, feel free to use HTTPS. And then finally, the refetch interval, I kind of went over every 60 seconds, it will check the WordPress environment and update the internal schema that we create for our Gatsby environment with the new data it finds. So now when we run npm run develop, this will run Gatsby develop for us inside our terminal. Um, and that'll take a couple of seconds to boot up. So I might do a quick fast forward. So as you can see, we've now got two new um, URLs that Gatsby has provided us. One is for our local development environment, which if I show you, it should look very familiar to the starter kit I demoed in the previous video, except this time we don't have the images, um, just the home page and second page. But we are also given a second URL, which is the local host environment with underscore GraphQL, triple underscores. And this is a graphical interface, which is very familiar to the WordPress interface we had. Um, the only difference is, is that we are now querying inside our local um, Gatsby environment GraphQL schema. So this is slightly different to the WordPress as we have access to some of the site information. If we configured site metadata, some of the images and uh, data sources that um, Gatsby provides. But you'll notice we also have WordPress, and this has all of the information that we had previously available to us in our WordPress admin area. So we can go ahead and create our own query, and we can query, say, posts, and look at the nodes, and we'll get the title for each one, and we'll get the date for each one, and see what that looks like. And then we can also get the slug. And now we're getting the data returned to us without communicating to an external API every time we make a request. Um, every 60 seconds, uh, Gatsby will go and grab the data source and uh, grab the data from the external API and then provide it to us in our own local schema. Um, and this means that we can create um, really quick uh, queries and make pages using data that is available to us locally in the form of JSON from the GraphQL uh, payload response. One thing you might notice is that we're only getting 10 posts back, and this is because WP GraphQL by default only returns the first 10 um, items. We can get around that by saying first, say, 500, and that will return to us a much larger payload. Um, I assume this is to improve performance and, you know, if you had thousands of posts, then it might return a response which could crash the browser. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. We now have our own local schema available to us from our WordPress environment, except this time it's available to us within Gatsby and allows us to query directly within Gatsby without communicating externally every time it wants to make a request.